Oh way, after about a whole year since I've now finally coming back onto NES Remix 2, as were well, me and Pinkie Pie already mentioned about this since the majority of Super Mario Party Let's Play. So, I'm finally back into this game and hopefully though, the Wii U save data will not even corrupt it at all. So even then though, let's just hope that will not ever happen again. So even then though, yeah, that's the entire end of the story goes. So, hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here and I'm back for some more yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of NES Remix 2 for the Nintendo Wii U eShop download. So, last time we did manage to complete done with the forms of, uh, let's just say, both Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. And as you can tell, I've managed to got every single Rainbow Stars and all that stuff. And especially noticeable with uh, Punch Out as well. And I managed to gather all the uh, gold stars here and there as well. But unfortunately, I didn't get the rainbow stars though. But until the future of videos and onwards, until let's just say for every Tuesdays and Thursdays potentially for any uploading schedules by that time, well. I'm also able to come back onto that game until for the Rainbow Stars runs. So, yeah, today for this episode is the fact that we're about to be continuing things on onto the next game on NES Remix 2 set of challenges. We have Metroid, first released in, well, 1986, around the same year as Kid Icarus, and especially noticeable with Super Mario Bros. 2, in Japan anyway, though, also known as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. So, yeah, it, as I mentioned before about the fact that it's been about um, you know, the whole entire year since I actually managed to finally come back into this game. So some of these aspects have been slightly different for a change, like I accidentally managed to go myself the rainbow uh, outlines on Super Mario Bros. 2, as you can see right there. But don't worry folks, I'll show off the actual proper uh, rainbow star runs attempts on any single games by this point. So even then though, and also as you can tell in the top left corner, the actual stars rating is still pretty much exactly the same, so don't worry, things has been uh has not been changed for stars departments, but as you can tell uh, right off the bat though, that I got ourselves different amount of those uh, numbers B points. Because of this though, uh, not only do I able to go myself, you know the um, the Zelda 2 stamps I've managed to go off in the last video, but during and off of my own time, I managed to accidentally come across into these Kid Igris stamps, which there were eggplant uh, enemy right there, I'm not exactly sure what their names were, and especially noticeable with the Reaper from uh, Kid Igris. So, that's why it took so long to able to actually finally coming back onto NES Remix 2. In fact, I think last time I've actually touched upon this game actually was actually by the forms of in, uh, you know, last year in July. And I believe it was on the 11th of July or something like that. So it's potentially speaking, it's been about a year since like, you know, the previous episode. So even then though, hopefully we can able to get back on track onto this though, and I'm hoping the Wii U save data corruption will not even happen ever again, as I said, this countless amount of times. So, anyway, so let's get to it with the forms of uh, Mentroid. You know, I said this before, this game was first released in 1986, which, you know, this game did first came out on the Famicom disc system, but until a year later, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The biggest differences between the two is the fact that the Famicom Disk System actually had some more sound um, sound clips and all that stuff. You know, just like in, uh, you know, in Kid Icarus, and especially noticeable with, uh, um, I would classify for saying Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, and especially noticeable with the original Legend of Zelda game. So even then though, chances are that, um, yeah, you probably get the idea for that. So. As for Metroid itself, especially noticeable for how many set of challenges they've got us to, and that was the fact that I believe it has like 12 stages, so even then know that um, I believe it has like the exact same amount of stages as Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Super Mario USA, but even then though, that's not much as to anything else to be said and done. So even then though, from a get-go though, that was actually a pretty good start with the rainbow stars and everything, so the next stage we have is collect any sort of uh, missiles, so even then though, like, uh, missile expansion, so even then though, that the gameplay in Metroid though, for those of you who have a first time experiencing, uh, watching our, um, experience of Metroid, it's very simple, it's basically, it's like an exploration type of game, and then basically what you need to do is just go from point A to point B, within, like, different sections in between the forms of, like, sort of exploration areas, so even then though, you probably get the idea of how Metroid goes. And even then though, the first time I've ever experienced Metroid, it was the fact that, um, I think one of my first games I've ever played with uh, Metroid stuff was, ironically, is, uh, 
I would say the original Metroid of all things, which I did manage to got that back in, uh, I would say back in 2009 for a virtual console release on the Nintendo Wii. And for what I've played it, I don't really play that much because of how the fact that I just wasn't able to actually collect the insane amount of those uh, virtual console games back in the day. But unfortunately though, for 2018 and onwards though, you can no longer gonna be able to actually play uh, virtual, although yeah, I can, I can able to still play those virtual console games back in the day, especially noticeable I managed to still got those things in during the likes of in, uh, you know, during the likes of in my SD cards back in the day, but, um, unfortunately though, I can't able to actually purchase, uh, more of those virtual console games, and even WiiWare games to top it off, to able to actually just for the sake of, like, completing the entire collection for, uh, you know, Nintendo Wii downloadable software stuff as far as it's concerned. So even then though, you probably get the idea for that. So even then though, for what I've played Metroid, it's actually not that bad actually. But uh, it might be a little bit more uh, dated now on the original game. But thankfully though, they did manage to able to give Metroid the uh, a remake on the Game Boy Advance, which is known as Metroid Zero Mission. And unfortunately I didn't get the Rainbow Star on that run, but uh... Then again, much like in Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, and especially noticeable in Super Mario Bros. 3, and heck, even with Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, I'll be back for those for, uh, um, you know, the Rainbow Stars runs. So, yeah, but then again, that's, uh, you probably get the suggestions by this point. So, uh, yeah, a few things I want to explain about this, actually, after when, uh, Duffy has not mentioned about the forms of, uh, several news and all that stuff, is the fact that, uh, recently, during the likes of in last week or so, well, almost a week ago at this point now, that uh, Nintendo actually able to actually announce there's going to be another model for the Nintendo Switch, if you guys can clearly tell already, they were actually going to be announcing there's actually a smaller version of the Nintendo Switch, but not only that, a much more portable only compared to the forms of like, uh, the normal Switch, because even then, uh, the entire uh, Nintendo Switch Lite, as what's its name of that particular console itself, uh, it's basically, it's like the original Nintendo Switch, but without any Joy-Cons attached to it now. So even then though, um, I'm pretty sure that um, every single buttons are now placed all in one particular unit. So even then though, and also they are, uh, they actually have ourselves some missing features for that specific uh, Nintendo Switch Lite. If, uh, it's pretty good for able to actually play this thing with uh, little kids out there, because if those kids never seem to experience uh, Nintendo Switch so far. You know, it's kind of like the same thing for how it does it whenever when Nintendo was first announced. Uh, you know, Nintendo 2DS back in the day in 2013, but then in 2017 they later on announced, you know, the new Nintendo 2DS XL, which basically behaves exactly like the new 3DS XL, but, you know, without any 3D uh, feature. So even then though, that can be the same applies for uh, the Nintendo Switch Mini or the Nintendo Switch Lite, as far as I meant to say. In fact, for that particular name, it almost feels really identical to Nintendo DS Lite back in 2006 or something. Which, even then, it could be a little bit of a possibility as of how this is going. So, even then, though, for what I've noticed, for what I've seen the actual, uh, uh, the aesthetics about the forms of, uh, the Nintendo Switch Mini, uh, basically, uh, as I said before, it's all entirely in handheld mode, which I've already mentioned about this before, because of, uh, although you can still able to use the Joy-Cons, but you have to use them separately, so even then know that, uh, well, taking other games like 1-2-Switch, for example, well, in order to actually play that game, it's the fact that, well, obviously, not only does the Nintendo Switch Lite needs to be on handheld mode, handheld mode at all times, but it's also the fact that matter is, though, is the fact that, um, you weren't able to actually realize about something that, although I'm pretty sure that uh, you can able to actually use the Joy Cons from uh, when you're trying to able to actually like, although kind of think about it, I just get a little bit confused right now. But even then though, um, some things is worth mentioning though with the Nintendo Switch lights as far as the actual system itself. About the fact the matter is though is the fact that there was actually missing some features like there was no kickstand or anything like that, and that could be also same applies by the forms of. Uh, uh, there was a lack of, I mean, the lack of, um, how do I describe it, actually? Oh, yeah, the lack of, um, the able to actually, you can't able to play, uh, Nintendo Switch Lite on TV mode this time, and especially noticeable that you cannot even access to the actual Nintendo Switch dock anymore, so even then, though, I understand because of how the fact that their, that particular system was actually way too smaller than the, uh, the normal one, which, 
to be honest with you, I'm actually pretty okay with that particular design, but I'm honestly, I'm gonna have to be honest with you for this point, guys. I'm probably not gonna get the Nintendo Switch Lite at all, because, well, first of all, because if you couldn't tell already that, um, I'm much more happier with the forms of my Nintendo Switch at the moment, because I can able to play on the go, and especially noticeable I can able to play this on TV mode for specifically capture recording, and especially noticeable about the fact that I can able to play it on tabletop mode for, uh, Specifically playing with the others on the tabletop mode or something like that and obviously I can play on the handheld mode whenever I want But uh, here's, here's some quite few downsides I can must confess about this particular device and that was the fact that well Obviously that particular uh, Nintendo Switch Lite is mainly focusing on handheld mode as I said before But uh, however though when it comes to certain everything else for this part um, I really honestly not a big fan of the actual, like, well, the actual D-pad itself is way more better than the normal Joy-Cons themselves, because even then, though, it's all in the actual D-pad directional pad shapes, even then, though, kind of like how we did on the Wii U gamepad on the Wii U, and especially noticeable with, uh, the Nintendo GameCube controller and Nintendo DS, and especially noticeable with the 3DS family, so even then, though, and you know, heck, even with the Wii Remote as a result, too. So at least even then, though, there's some kids out there, for those of you who've ever played Super Mario Maker 2, who I'm talking about, and especially noticeable with new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, they might have an easier time just able to actually play, uh, uh, 2D games on the handheld mode on, um, specifically, uh, Nintendo Switch Lite, because even then, though, that particular model has a much better directional pad at all. So even then, though, because unlike the regular one, where it has, like, separate, uh, directional arrow buttons and all that stuff, which, to be honest with you, it doesn't bother me that much, but at least even then, though, I'll take the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller any day, because it has, like, pretty cool, uh, directional pad, as far as I'm most likely concerned about this particular stuff. So, and, um, finally, though, perhaps it's a little bit too much of a nitpicking I'm as well able to for this point, folks, is the fact that I just cannot believe that Super Mario Party is not compatible with, uh, well, obviously, the Switch Lite does not allow you to play Super Mario Party this time, because I understand because that game utilizes the Joy-Con features, but, um, obviously, if you couldn't tell, because, uh, that game does not utilize handheld mode this time. The only functions for Super Mario Party actually offers us to is, of course, the forms of, uh, the tabletop mode for specifically for some features, like, for instance, the Toad's Rec Room and stuff. And especially noticeable with the Joy-Cons, because that utilizes that game entirely. And, um, there's no handheld mode in Super Mario Party, so even then, though, that, uh, well, sadly to say, for those of you who have not experienced that game at all, if you manage to be able to buy the Nintendo Switch Lite, um, sadly, that game will be unplayable on that particular, um, you know, Nintendo Switch Lite, because, well, Obviously, with the lack of, uh, TV mode options, and especially noticeable with, uh, you know, basically for any single parts of this stuff, and I just keep on getting stuck like nothing else, but anyway, though, um, aside from that, though, um, all the functions might actually have the exactly the same routine as the forms of how it does in the original model, like, for instance, ah, oh, there's some, a lot of, um, uh, bypass flaws, I forgot about those, let's try this again. But thankfully though, I did manage to get myself some health points though, so anyway, let's just try this again. Oh, son of a biscuit! Ah. Oh well though, I'm not gonna retry everything again, because otherwise that'll take me a lot of tries to able to actually bypass this stuff. So anyways, let's see if we can do this again. There we go. I really can't guarantee that will be a rainbow run though, because, um, you know that third section I just always attempt to get stuck on? So, yeah, that's not possible. So even then though, oh well though. So, um, another thing I want to explain about this, potentially, is the fact that I've heard from, uh, several rumors about the fact that there's gonna be a, uh, the returning from the Super Monkey Ball franchise is gonna make a comeback, and I was like, oh, yes, those, the actual, um, series might actually make its return at long last. Well, I don't know when that's gonna be released, though, but I've heard that in a certain classification from, uh, Tyrowin, uh, classification for the upcoming Super Monkey Ball game, which, what I've can gather, uh, that might actually come onto the PC, uh, computers for the very first time on the Monkey Ball series, and especially noticeable on the PlayStation 4, and, heck, even on the Nintendo Switch. How about that? But, unfortunately for Microsoft department out there, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the Xbox One is not listed on that particular upcoming Super Monkey Ball game, because... 
Well, the only time that Microsoft has Super Monkey Ball game on it was just actually obviously Super Monkey Ball Deluxe on the original Xbox. So there's no uh, Xbox 360 installment or anything like that if you don't count the uh, the Sega Superstars franchise, and especially noticeable with uh, no Xbox One game so far. So even then, though, chances are possibilities were endless. So even then, though, that um, again, I don't know exactly what that game was supposed to be releasing on that time, but. Uh, Whenever when a new game is about to be finally uh, coming onto its return, well, I was able to actually look back onto the previous uh, Super Monkey Ball entries and how do I think of them um, about them all. So even I know that the only few exceptions, which there are, obviously the Engage uh, version of Super Monkey Ball Junior. Because I say that because Super Monkey Ball on the Engage, which is a crappy uh, mobile phone. It's basically Super Monkey Ball Jr., but with lesser amounts of stages and all that stuff. And plus, every time you get to the new stages or something like that, aside from the bonus stages, well, usually the bonus stages, they usually always play in the, uh, every single bonus stages music, so even then though. But for every single stages, including beginner modes, advanced, master, and even expert stages, they always play the exact same jungle theme tune every single time, and I was like, Oh, no thanks. I probably should take uh, the Game Boy Advance entry any day than uh, the engaged version of the game because otherwise it just goes slightly lazy in the execution to me though. So, but I digress though. So, we're actually getting quite close towards the end of Metroid right now. So, even then, next of all, we need to freeze up the Metroid. If you remember these from, uh, you know, Kirby Streamline 3 in one of those objectives where basically uh, you always have to use the actual ice ability in order to actually just manage to able to freeze up those Metroids because otherwise if you don't then obviously it'll drain your health. So even then, now, if, if you couldn't tell already, I'm actually doing pretty mediocre at this at the moment because even then, now, I do understand about the fact that this is an old school game and apologize with the actual uh, the lack of uh, sprite imagery, even with all this flickeriness is actually being slightly lacky or anything like that. That's because of how the fact that you know with capture cards and all that stuff sometimes, they always attempt to able to actually make every single sprite disappear. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Anyway, we'll try that again, but hopefully for a successful attempt. If I do mess things up, on the other hand though, I should probably just able to jump cut for most of the time. Well, until later on though, on um... I would say in remakes two set of stages, and especially noticeable on uh, the bonus stages, because even then though, that uh, we'll mention more on those until whenever we get to those parts on, uh, you know, specifically in every, uh, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays for the time being. And as for everything else though, even with the actual upcoming new Let's Play until at some point in September, because even then though, we got ourselves once again a big marathon we'd like to tackle through at some point in, uh, you know, next month in August. So even then though, we could expect it to deal with, uh, the Castlevania marathon to do, or especially notable with, uh, um, I don't know exactly how to recall it though, but even then though, wow, that was a really bad attempt on that particular final point of that particular challenge right there, because these annoying orange rings that loves to get in your way, and even then though, that's only because of the fact that, well, since we actually gone towards the end of this though, so, but even then though, for my first experience Metroid though, as I said this before, my first experience with Metroid is of course, the Nintendo Wii's virtual console version, and after I pick it up, the uh, the actual downloadable version on that game, well, I found the game to be alright back in the day, but um, the reason why I'm now into the Metroid series is because of, uh, well, obviously with uh, Metroid Prime 4 will be on its way on the Nintendo Switch, but uh, one thing I should probably point out right away though, and I'm sure many people already know this by this point, is that the actual now in development cycle for uh, Metroid Prime 4 is about to be restarting, well it did usually happen back in during the likes of in the beginning portion in 2019 so far, so even then though, hopefully it will give us a lot of time, especially noticeable that Retro Studios was actually into this particular development cycle, which I'm very glad about that, because, uh, you know with the Metroid Prime Trilogy stuff, has always been the best entries of, uh, the Metroid series, next to Super Metroid and everything like that, for the 2D, uh, Metroid stuff like this. And anyway, so here we go with the last mission in Metroid, so we have defeat Mother Brain and then escape, so... Yeah, because rather think about it, if you think this game was over, well, we got ourselves a countdown self-destruct sequence, so... This is what it means by that, this is what makes this actual mission slightly trickier if you really want to go for, like, the Rainbow Star run, because all you need to do is, is basically, we need to go for a serious amount of tiny platforms, and... 
Believe me, when it comes to like jumping, even with controls in this game, wasn't exactly accurate in my opinion, because there are a lot of few times though where, if you can tell, that we did manage to be able to utilize the actual screw attack, which is the most uh, common thing when it comes to the forms of the actual or the, uh, the most iconic uh, thing in the world when it comes to Metroid series all by itself. It wasn't exactly that um, accurate to me though when it comes to the actual momentum or anything like that. And of course, if you ever think about it, we got only one piece of health in order to actually success for this mission. Because if you let the actual self-destruct sequence get, you know, get all the way to zero, well, we need to be able to refight against with Mother, Mother Brain again. So even then, now that's as far as I can go. Luckily though, you do have a little bit of plenty of time to be able to actually escape from this part, if you can tell on the, uh, the top left corner. Right uh, above, or in this case, underneath that energy health. So even then, you probably get the idea for that. So... Yeah, that's from my first experience of Metroid though, honestly guys, apart from the fact that I think my actually first time ever played Metroid was actually once again, just like any forms of how it does it on uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and especially noticeable with, uh, well, especially with uh, Kid Icarus, and especially noticeable with, uh, um, you know, Super Mario Bros. 2, well, Super Mario USA, if you want to expect that. Uh, my first experience, and especially noticeable, well, aside from the actual uh, Nintendo Wii's virtual console version I've got, but um, for the uh, first time I've played Metroid was actually by the forms of in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, when it comes to masterpieces, alongside with the forms of, uh, well, specifically Super Metroid here and there as well, because even then, though, those, these are the only two Metroid games they are usually be playable in the Masterpiece mode on Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Even though it might be seems redundancy now, because we now actually got the, uh, the regular physical versions of that specific titles now, even especially noticeable with the actual downloadable versions of the games themselves now. So even then though, that it might be entirely pointless now for uh, Masterpieces mode, I'm afraid, because even then, uh, well, some of these stuff are cool, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of how the fact that it does have a time limit though, because even then, no, I understand because it's almost like a demo of any sorts, but um, every now and then now, is the fact that it might be seen redundant now, so even then, no, that's as far as I can go for that part, so. Alright, so, practically speaking, we're almost there towards the top, and if you hop onto this little elevator right there, that's how the mission ends, so. But there we go, that pretty much does it for Metroid, so. Great, you've revealed your mission. It will achieve or revive in peace in space, but it may be invaded by the other Metroid. Pray for a true, you know, peace in space. So, and every time you see in the ending sequence, we got ourselves. <gasps> Summers as a female? Okay, well, nice little uh, compliments right there, which probably explains why. That in your forms of being Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and especially noticeable with, uh, you know, in Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and the 3DS, and most recently, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, they did manage to be able to add in Su Zero Suit Samus as a female gender, so... Yeah, that's pretty cool though, but even then, though, that we did manage to conclude Metroid, and of course, like always, I'm gonna have to be able to do... Um, do successful attempts on specifically three stages in Rainbow Stars Run. So I'll meet you guys back with a successful attempt by starting through stage number three. So let's get to it. So even then though, we can able to actually do it from normally from here. So even then though, and that was actually a really bad attempt, but oh well, we'll uh, give us another shot. And of course, the only uh, Rainbow Star I always having a hard time on, it was actually on stage 7. It's nothing too bad by any means though, if you manage to get it down and over with. But uh, we'll mention more now whenever we get to that mission, so even then though, the third stage is not too bad, except for the fact that you need to be able to guess. On this little dirt part, you always have to go into the middle part, because that's the only reason why I didn't get the Rainbow Star to begin with, so... But regardless, I'm pretty sure we managed to go in the end. So even then, though, no, there goes 15 seconds, uh, 0.3 milliseconds to top it off. And we actually got ourselves a rainbow star to begin with, so. Alright, so now onto the forms of stage 7. This is the mission I was talking about right there. Now, the first part is not too bad. You need to be able to actually go after the actual wave beam and stuff like that. But whenever you're trying to get into the second phase, or in this case, the second section on that stage, this will get getting a little bit tricky if you really want to go after the Rainbow Stars on that part, because even then though... Well, do you know these little, uh, ball projectiles that you always have to destroy? Well, that might be the only be the case though, because in order to actually just like to, uh, 
Complete the mission is that you need to be able to destroy these little weird ball projectiles. And no matter what though, do not go near to it or even touch them as a result because that way the damage output is way too much on these particular projectiles like this. So even though the chances are, you need to be very careful most of the time. But luckily though, since I managed to able to actually figure this out though, whenever you're trying to make this stage or this particular section a lot quicker and faster, even though despite the fact that I keep on running into those, uh, ball projectiles super easily. In fact, it'll actually took you about 20 health down, so even then, you just have to stay sharp on that one, so... And I believe if you do manage to die on that particular, uh, section right there, it will be roughly about four times per hit, so even then, you just have to stay sharp on that one. Well, a good thing about this, though, that, um, every time you're able to kill those things, there's actually a, uh, missile refill, and especially noticeable with the health refill, too. So even then, it was a good way to able to actually get a chance to able to actually just to live from that particular stuff. So even then, though. No. And also another thing is the fact that the wave beam doesn't do that much damage to these little particular ball projectiles, I don't think. Because, well, I did manage to be able to try test that out on my uh, own set of times or, one, or anything like that. But most of the time, it just took forever to be able to actually just to hit those. So even then, though, no, that can also be same applies on the remake, regrettably. But even then, though. No, at least I can able to control fine enough on the remake, on, uh, Metroid Zero Mission and stuff, so... But for, for the time being, since we got ourselves two missile, uh, two missiles on me, I think it's about time to able to actually, well, not only just trying to kill the all sorts of those stuff, but if you use the missiles, you can able to actually kill these little, uh, uh, purple ball stuff very easily, so even then, though, that way you can able to actually kill those things instantly, so... Definitely a better way to do that though, compared to the wave beam, because that way it will be able to actually do it just no problem. So, it's one classified that for those of you ever trying to experience that st specific stuff, but I digress. Alright, so last stage on the Rainbow Stars run on the original Metroid game, we now have stage 8. So, even then though, basically the entire portion of this is the fact that, well, not so much on this, uh, the first part. But on the second and the third and probably the fourth and final part is that obviously we need to hit on to uh, collect the energy tank and that's all you have to do. So even then, for the most part though, I feel like the challenges in this uh, this particular Metroid is very self-explanatory. But uh, if you really want to get yourselves a Rainbow Stars run like I was going to be doing right now, well, you might as well be able to get, you know, a little bit more accurate when it comes to controlling the actual uh, Samus around him herself. So... Because I say her, because if you already can tell, she's actually a female, so... If you thought that Samus was a, uh, a male, but nope, it was actually female, because, you know, if, uh... You know, she took, uh, Samus' suits off itself, well, basically, you can tell from the ending, well, she's actually female, so... You can't really tell by that, because even then, though, all you can really tell from that, because you've been following through, uh... Uh, let's play of Super Smash Bros. Brawl back in 2017 that you do notice that me and Piglet already mentioned about this kind of stuff from earlier ago. So I believe that pretty much does it for Metroid for the Rainbow Stars run. So even then though, that's, um, three stages done. So even then though, do we get another stamp or anything like that? Well, apart from the fact that we actually only got one stamp or the one new stamp in between, which is actually body forms of Zelda based off from Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Because after when she wakes up, by, uh, you know, obtaining the Triforce of Courage and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, as far as I can say and, and all that stuff. So even then, though, I think that's about it when it comes to the forms of this particular video for this point, And we've only got ourselves about... I would say 11 stamps to go, so even then though, we're actually getting quite close towards the end of uh, NES Remix 2, so even then though, it's actually gone pretty quick than I expected, but then again, I'll try to upload more of these as quick as I can before we're able to move on to the next set of Let's Plays in the future though, so, but who knows, we'll find things out by then, so I guess I'll end things off at this point here, so join me next time on Let's Play NES Remix 2, is the fact that we're about to be taking on to the forms of Remix 2 set of stages, so, once again, 20 stages, so yeah, see you guys next time, later fellas.